This is one of those situations where it's just like, oh, do I, do I want to do this? It's not making you feel safe. I'd rather not be here. I'm not enjoying this. God, this is going to be terrifying. What? What? That scared the f out of me. Well, it's been two and a half long years, guys, but I'm finally back in the UK, back where things make sense. I love Japan, but it's the sort of country you need to get out of once in a while, you know, the places, the familiar faces. Here I can forget about all that. Here I can relax. Here I can finally be with your favorite Wacky Weekend host. See you there. Wacky Weekend UK edition. God's sake. Well, the good news is we're actually escaping London today for what Ooh. I've got lined up a little bit later on. Okay, Wales. It's not, it's not that bad, though. No. <laughs> Let me finish my fish, but let's go and see. Luckily, it's about an hour outside London, so we can escape the crowds and uh, do something better than this. So, given it's my first time back in the UK for three years, we've got an extra special wacky weekend this time around, because not only are we joined by Connor, but also Joey the Anime Man. And being the generous host that I am, I've decided to treat them to the finest accommodation in all of the UK. For Joey, I wanted him to get in touch with his Australian roots, and so I've arranged for us to stay inside Britain's most haunted prison, sleeping in the most degraded cell possible. And you can see how we get on in jail with a somewhat displeased Joey later on in the episode. Meanwhile, I've got something completely different lined up for Connor. For years now, he's been pestering me to go camping, and so I finally caved in. And what better place to camp than inside an unsettling 700-year-old church? Lucky Connor. But before revealing tonight's venue, while en route to the countryside from London, Connor forces us to stop at a Tesco for dinner so he can buy the godforsaken Tesco meal deal that he's been craving so relentlessly since he left Japan. Oh, God. All right, let's find the meal deals then. Where would they be? We gotta go to the sandwiches. This is the only thing that matters. This is the only reason we're doing this video. About to discover what this meal deal is all about. I don't think I've ever had it. I don't think I've ever had a meal deal. It better live up to the reputation that you've given it over the last two years of trash taste. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. There's a deal that's so good, it can't be missed. <laughs> well, I don't know where it is, <laughs> Where is it? Oh, this is shit. Oh, no, this is a small selection of oh, meal Oh, don't, don't, oh. don't try and pretend like this isn't the normal meal deal. Okay, we've got some good choices. We are missing my favourite, and they're grinding a toddler in the back, so you can't do anything. <laughs> I still don't get why this is so special. Like, what is good? Oh. No, what? they have one left. They have one left in the crevice. This. This is the chicken bacon stuffing. This is the best one, right? right. This is the best one without doubt. I feel like this has all been rather anticlimactic. Like, two, two and a half, three years I've known Connor, and every day he's been like, the meal deal, the meal deal, the meal deal. I had one today. And it's just like, oh, it's some crap sandwiches. And a, a, an empty rack of crisps. Like you like this one? It's got mayo on it. Mayo. You like mayonnaise, right? It, look, it looks. It looks rancid. Look at that. That's not. That's really the sorriest looking ham and cheese sandwich that. I've ever That's seen. A nice well, we've got our meal deal, and uh, I can't say I'm overly excited to eat this meal deal. Now we have been to some wonderful places over the years. We've been to the best hotel in Tokyo. We've okay. stayed at the worst hotel in Japan. Yeah, I don't like that one. But we've never gone camping. Oh, okay. And you've always wanted to go camping, haven't you? I've always thought that we should do it, you know, prepared. I'm not prepared to I've got camp. A, I've got a sleeping bag. Right. As you know, the UK is one of the most haunted countries on Earth. Well, we're going to test you today. We're going to see okay. how good you are, really, with the dark, with the horrors, with the terrors of ghosts, because Bring we are on. staying at one of England's most haunted churches. Inside wow. the church. Uh, how, how can you camp in a church? <laughs> it, it, there's, there's a building, there's roofs and stuff. What? Well, it's still camping, isn't it? How? Because there's no bedroom in the church. You're just going to be sleeping on the floor of a church. There's no beds. There's no beds. It's a church. What's the point of this, then? It's a church. No one's going to watch this. Why would anyone want to watch us sleep on the floor of a church? Because it's a haunted church. There's going to be, like, God. ghosts and shit. St Mary's Church dates back to the 13th century and is most famous for being featured in a Charles Dickens novel, Great Expectations, where he describes the eerie tombs of the ten children buried out front as little stone lozenges. While the church formally closed 30 years ago, for just £100 a night, it's yours to camp in and freely explore. Who wouldn't want to stay here? What do you think? I don't 
don't want to stay here, but I guess I have no choice. <laughs> Why don't you want to stay here? I, you know, I had a five-star hotel book for tonight, and then Chris dragged me off to film a video. <laughs> I paid money for a hotel room that I'm not using tonight. And is Chris going to reimburse me? Fuck no, he's not going to. He let me sleep in the world's shittiest champing. Not even a real word. I think we need a key. Hang on, hang on. Oh yeah, there's a giant keyhole. Like a comical-esque keyhole. Look at that. How do we get in? Connor's just found the toilet. This is the this is the church toilet that this you'll be feeling very much Dark Souls esque. I had to put a code in to get into the toilet, and now to get the keys to get inside, you need another combination. Oh! So you type in the code right for the second entrance, and look what you get. Come on! Oh. Come on! This is this is a video game. This is a video, <laughs> this is literally it's like Silent Hill. This is the key item. <laughs> look. <laughs> Keys just got so boring. When did we make keys so boring? Now it's just cards. Key yeah. cards, right? This, this is, is a, this is this is a statement. That's got some serious weight to it. Yeah. You could kill someone with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a church, but like, <laughs> where do we sleep? Uh Oh, I found our bed. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> they have such little faith that you'll you'll be okay that they gave you hot water bottles. <laughs> look, look, it must get so fucking cold in here. It looks really nice. I'm kind of creeped out by the fact we're about to sleep in this. This doesn't feel like something that should be slept in. A bit like Connor's bed. Oh yeah. Fuck. Give your sermon to the people. The Sunday called... The Sunday called... Quim Quagisma. This might be the worst sermon I've ever heard. There's not really much to do. Just bask in the glory of God. Of the stuff here. Oh, camping information. This really is like we've started a quest. Like all, <laughs> the, all the clues have been left for you. <laughs> is it just me or does this artwork look absolutely terrifying? Look at this. Does that, does that? It's good, but it is, it's not making you feel safe. I found this door. We don't know where it leads. There's a few around here. And it feels like we're playing Dark Souls. Let's see where it leads then. What is that? What is this? <sighs> what? This is just like creepy, isn't it? It just doesn't look. Oh. The temperature's just dropped so much in here. I'm not religious, so I don't know what this is. But it's really creepy that everything's in seashells. This is one of those situations where it's just like, oh, do I, do I want to do this? Do I want to sleep in a church that is as eerie as this? There is a beauty to it, but when the lights go out and the sun goes down, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna feel a bit on edge, to be honest. With the creepy vibes in the vestry and the video game quest atmosphere, the uncomfortable mood suddenly changes when we discover some actual real video games randomly placed within the church. We're idiots. Why? This is going to be the best night of our lives. What are you on about? Check this out, dude. Check this out. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. Oh, yes. Tony Hawk's Underground 2? <laughs> Rugby League? Oh my god, Chris, 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 Chris. Oh, I love this one. Is oh this my a, god. Is this a VHS? <laughs> it is, is it? <laughs> Do you remember? Were you born when this was a thing? I was, I was, I was. Oh my god. The excitement is short lived, however, when we fail to find a PlayStation, a TV, or a VHS player. No Bridget Jones's diary for anyone. And so we turn to making our beds. Wow, look at this amazing bed. <laughs> I can't wait to make it. Let's make my bed. <laughs> Voila. I've never slept on one of these before though, have you? You haven't lived. I, I guess tonight I'm living. <laughs> and then tomorrow I can die in the graveyard. <laughs> so, win-win. <laughs> this is awesome. Like, all jokes aside about it being kind of like, not the comfiest, obviously, it's a church. It is still like an amazing place and I, I, I can see why people would want to go and have an experience like this. This is really cool. And you get a free hot water bottle, <laughs> which is pretty damn nice. What more could you want? Mm. 
As night falls and the temperature drops inside the church, we decide to head out into the eerie graveyard and take a look around. Hey. All right. Now, we're going to go outside into the graveyard yeah. to the dead of night. It's what? Why? 11 <laughs> o'clock. It's pitch black now. I don't think Be we're around. going to find anything, if I'm honest with you. Well, if we're going to find anything, it's going to be there. So right, let's, let's go and check it out. Let's go. Oh, oh the crosses are creepy. Oh. I don't know why. It's just, it's unnerving, isn't it? Oh, that's really grim. I don't think it's haunted. It's just, you know, I'd rather not be here. I'm not enjoying this. I'd like to go back in summer. Isn't that every wacky weekend, yeah, Carl? I'd like to not be doing what I'm doing right now. I'm an asshole in a graveyard. I'm going to join them at some point. It's, it's a really uh, eerily silent place. You keep hearing like twigs breaking and things moving around the graveyard. Mm. How are you feeling? How am I feeling? No. I just don't really want to sleep in a church. You know. where's, the, where's the Premier Inn? Where's the Travel Lodge? It was the hotel, motel, holiday inn. Because I don't want to be here. Pibble wouldn't stay here, would he? No. It's becoming, like, painfully clear that this does nothing. Look at how quickly the light dims if you don't do it. It's just like, it's, it's done. You have to be like, fucking like, this is the workout of the century, isn't it? Yes. It is really kind of crazy. To th when looking at the church, yeah. right, to think we have that entire building to ourselves and we're going to spend it on a very small bed. I'm gonna cry. Well, don't cry just yet, because I've got Rice Krispie squares. Oh, yeah. What are we waiting for? <laughs> so, I think both Connor and I have got some kind of uncomfortable vibes from the vestry. I don't know if it's just because of the, the seashells. Or because it did. Oh, God, that door. Come off it. It's got, like, one of the coolest sounds I've ever heard. This interior is not nice. And so we're gonna put this GoPro here. You know, for a few hours overnight and see if anything pops up. If we were clever, we would have staged something. But we're not clever. I, you know, I hate those horror channels where they like clearly stage it and yeah. shit like that. Best of luck. That sounds it. like something's gonna happen. I don't think anything's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. And I kind of hope it doesn't, because we're gonna be sleeping two meters from this place. I'm sure nothing's gonna happen. Shortly after the GoPro begins recording, and the moments leading up to bed, we have something of a weird moment, when one of our fully charged portable lights randomly starts playing up, without explanation. We're really done, I'm tired. Oh, he's sleepy. I am, yeah. How are you not tired? I'm fucking naked. Oh, did you break my light? No. Why does it switch off? No, it's cheap light. light. It's not a cheap light, it's a bloody expensive light. Is it switched on? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It was on. It's blinking. I think your light's broken, mate. Brilliant. Well. Well, guys, it's, uh, it's crunch time. We're about to discover if you can sleep in a massive church uh, <laughs> on, on a pretty hard bed. In a relatively cheap sleeping bag. Any final thoughts, Connor? Not really looking forward to trying to sleep. I feel like I'm already not the most comfortable. I mean, you know, it's okay. I just wish there was a, a bed and a pillow. Are you glad you're no. uh, on Wacky Weekend? No, no. I don't know how Chris is going to survive, because I know Chris wakes up at like <laughs> one crumb of light, so good luck, Chris. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see. Oh god. Good morning everyone. Good to see you. It's uh, pretty surreal. You know when you wake up and you just sort of expect to be in your bed and then you open your eyes and there's this jarring sort of, oh I'm not in my bed, I'm in a church. I mean, it is a bit weird just waking up in front of a pulpit, in front of the cross. I, I, I slept not too bad, but I had about six hours sleep. So I woke up a few times. I woke up at about three o'clock and there's all this like weird creaking going on around the church. I don't know, maybe because it's hot and it's cold and things are moving. 
Other than that though, it's quite nice waking up with all the light coming in. And I, I don't don't think I want to do this again. Let's get some groundbreaking commentary. Connor C Dog voice actor's just woken up. <laughs> What's happened to your face? Oh, awful. <laughs> awful sleeping. Why would you want to do this? <laughs> Why would you pay money for this? No. Time for breakfast. No. Oh. Will you break bread with me? This is what <laughs> Jesus and Tim is. If Jesus were alive today, he'd be like, all right, yeah. Give me the marshmallow Rice Krispie squares. Because we're in a church, without realising it, I've uh, I've not been swearing as much. Have you done, have you found that as well? I've sworn probably twenty percent of what I would normally would in a wacky weekend video. Shit, fuck, shit, fuck, shit. Yeah. This is ruined. <laughs> Shocking. This is a place of God. I think it's a really interesting experience, and obviously the historical aspect of it is really interesting. And if you're really a big history buff, you love your churches and medieval history, you'll love it. But. You don't just leave here. That's my verdict. Well, we may not have seen any ghosts despite the bizarre light incident, but as Connor grabs his bags and heads off to his native land of Wales to look at a sheep, I head five hours west to Stonehenge to meet Joey, who's patiently waiting in front of the iconic British landmark. Here we are in the United Kingdom, next to the wonderful, illustrious, quintessential Stonehenge, the one and only. Problem is, uh, I'm waiting for my driver. I don't know where he is. He should have been here quite a while ago. Oh, there he is. Joey! Chris, how are you? Good to see you. It was an opportunity too good to miss. Hell meeting yeah. up with the great animation man here in the UK. And what a beautiful sight, Stonehenge. I haven't been here since Natsuki the movie. Right? I haven't been here at all, so it's been great. It's nice. It's not as good as the uh, Hokkaido to scale replica <laughs> that I saw what? last year. I can't believe I did it. How has the UK been so far? Yeah, it's been great. Like, very synonymous to Australia. Lots of drinking, lots of eating. Shocking. You know how it is. Shocking, Joe. My diet's been in shambles. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> so you might be wondering, why here in Stonehenge, right? Why not somewhere convenient? And it ties in to you being Australian. I want to do something special for you today. Something Okay. This Australian themed, right? What do you think Australia and England? Mm. What do you what do you think of? What comes to mind? Hubs. Hubs. Sausage rolls. Sausage rolls. Uh nice people. Prison. Convicts. Oh. Crime. Oh. Well, that's how Australia was formed, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, the British love to remind us about that. We do. We do. <laughs> Where we are now, 40 minutes west of here, All is right. Shepton Mallet Prison. Okay. Once the biggest prison in the UK, the oldest prison in the UK, and also the most haunted prison in the UK. Lovely! And we're gonna stay there. <laughs> I can't believe it. We're gonna stay overnight in a cell. What, in the most haunted prison in Britain? Yeah. Why? Get in touch with your Australian side. Enjoy prison life. Well, yes. if I say no, you're still gonna take me anyway, yeah. so let's just go then. Let's go. Shepton Mallet Prison. All right. In for a treat. Christ. What the fuck? <laughs> what a welcome sign. <laughs> it looks pretty eerie, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Oh my god. Won't wanna stay in there for the night. Yeah, imagine. Alright, let's go to our room, shall we? <laughs> fuck me. Shepton Mallet Prison has stood for almost 400 years, opening in 1625, having something of a reputation throughout the 18th and 19th centuries for its brutal living conditions. And as recently as 2010, 188 prisoners called these walls home. While the prison was officially decommissioned in 2013, today, for anyone mad enough, you can reserve a night in a cell for just £70. What a bargain! But given its troubled past, the site is particularly famous for its paranormal activity, with several notable spirits haunting the corridors, which we'll get into shortly. First things first though, Joey and I need to check into our luxurious quarters. Prisoners, Chris Sprawn and Joey Bissinger, that's us. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Off. Just... I've just realized there's like one bed. Yeah. How's that work then? Um, well, do you want the top bunk or the bottom bunk? <laughs> what? Do you want the top bunk or the bottom what? bunk? Is it, why is there only one bed? Well, here we are. This is our room for tonight. So we have one single bed here, steel frame. You know, some sturdy boy right there. Jesus. Uh, we got a cabinet. Just store things, I guess. <laughs> Looking lovely in there, isn't it? Looking lovely in there. Uh, we have one tiny window. Last glimpse of hope. We have a sink and a busted toilet. 
Fantastic. Apparently we're not allowed to use this toilet, we have to use the... I don't, I don't want to use yeah. the toilet, we have, to use, uh, we have to use the communal toilet, oh no. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> this is our room. Here's where we sleep in tonight. Thank you, Chris. Such an amazing weekend. Shotgun that. All of that. <laughs> what do you mean shotgun that? I'm having that. You'll have it, you'll, you'll... you'll I, guess have... I'll, I guess I'll sleep on the floor then. Where were you staying last night? Uh, at the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm here, baby. For one person, this is pretty unpleasant. For two people, I'm surprised they've even marketed this as like a two-person room. I, I guess maybe to get like the authentic experience, right? Because I guess prisoners, they'd shove two of them in here. Would they though? Probably. Where's the double bed? Where's the bunk bed? What's that? I mean, Jesus, even the inmates in Shawshank Redemption didn't have to put up with beds like this. When I met Andy Dufresne, he was a broken man with a very broken face. What I love is in the corridors, in, there's a few other people staying here tonight basically, and they've all got like blow up beds. You can hear them go <laughs> blowing the beds up, right? No, but we don't have that. I'm going hardcore tonight. Joey's, Joey wants the real authentic experience. I have the thinnest piece of fabric in existence. He's had to make your bed <laughs> in prison. <laughs> Done. <laughs> when I booked this right, I did it on a bit of a whim. I didn't think it'd actually be like a real experience with real like walls covered in crap, a floor, one bed made of like just pure rust. <laughs> it's, a, it's an authentic experience and I'm glad we're only doing it for one night. All right, let's try the bed. So many choices, which way? to put the sleeping bag on. This is a new sleeping bag. It's gonna be covered in like rust. <laughs> <laughs> this is Amazon Basics. Big money was spent here. All right. Oh my Lord, no. This is probably worse than the floor. Do you know why? why? You feel every like, hole, parts of your body go into the holes. <laughs> it's like, like the Terminator when he goes through the door, like he can go yeah. through the gates. It's like that. The floor's better than this. <laughs> and, you know, some people have bought like a fucking king size bed with them. We've got, <laughs> Nothing, a, like a rag covered in rust. But like, look, look at this. Right, you're laying on it, and you just sort of go through the holes. And like, it's just pure pain. Even the prisoners didn't have to put up with this, because they had at least had a fucking mattress, right? Having embraced our uh, interesting accommodation, Joey and I venture out of the cell to get our bearings as a warm-up for tonight when inmates are encouraged to go out and explore the prison freely. And we quickly find ourselves overwhelmed at the sheer scale of the prison and its four cavernous wings. Oh my fucking god, dude. We have to come back here later tonight. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is that? Are you fucking kidding me? Listen to the noise. What is that? Dame, 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 dame. This is insane. It's still kind of like daytime. It's what? 8 p.m. So it's still a little bit bright. And I'm already terrified and it's not even dark. And this is the wing that's supposed to be the most haunted as well. Brilliant. Well, you'll be coming back here later, Joe. Hello. Why me? I'll be in the cell playing Tetris or something. <laughs> There's something about this prison that feels very off. And um, just. There's so many empty cells. Oh, why didn't we get this room? There's two beds in here. Double the uncomfort. <laughs> As we wander around, we run into a member of staff who maintains the prison. And while they give us a tour, when they discover which cell we're staying in, they inform us of some pretty disturbing news. So we just had a tour around the entire prison. It lasted about an hour. It was really interesting, learning the history of this place. And at one point in the tour, we were quite near this cell with everyone. And the guy told a story about somebody who took their own lives, well, tragically, in their cell. Yeah. And then they went, oh, and by the way, that was cell number eight. Who's in cell number eight? On the second and, floor. And we were like, no. That's us. We That's like, this room. Of all the rooms, of all the cells on this bloody floor, we got the one where someone, unfortunately... Apparently right there. <laughs> yeah, right here. They put a rope around their neck. Very sad, very tragic. We've got a torch right here. And now we're going to go around the prison and um, reluctantly see what we can find. <sighs> wow. So this is the 
A wing. So apparently there's a guy you might see sometimes walking around here. What creeps me out is that you can go in most of these cells. Fuck you. What? Whoa! Fuck you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you with that. I am Cornelius Minty. <laughs> You're having a laugh? I was born in Clutton Workhouse in 1850 to my mother, Sarah Minty. Cornelius. Mate. You're having a right old time in there, aren't you? Yeah, this room is three stories. So there are oh a my. bunch of other cells on oh there. Oh my god. <sighs> Remember in that abandoned love hotel, I was like, I feel like I'm in a first person horror game that I don't want to be in. This is, this is like actually next level fucking terror. I'm really glad I'm with you right now, Chris. Yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'm pretty yeah. Because I would not be able to come in here by myself, fuck that. This is gonna be one of those videos where like, a viewer's gonna be looking through it on YouTube and they gonna be like, oh look, there's a face behind yeah, you. Yeah, pause at 24, uh, yeah. 76. It's gonna happen, it happens every time we do like one of these like scary videos. Yeah. And it creeps me out every time. And I know it's going to happen on this one more than any other. Every like tiny little sound is just putting me on edge. While ghostly sightings have been seen throughout the prison's history, there's a reason Shepton Mallet has a reputation for being haunted. In the 1970s, both prisoners and night officers working in the prison reported sightings of a ghostly woman passing through the corridors at night, dressed in pure white. So on edge were the guards, many started to refuse working night shifts at all, leading the British government to carry out an investigation. What they did discover was that the white lady actually existed as an inmate over a century before. This is where the, um, the, the white, white lady, the white lady. Yes. explain the story of the white lady. So if I remember the story correctly, it was a woman who I believe murdered her husband, husband who cheated on her, who cheated on her. And her last wish before she got executed was for her to wear her wedding dress. Uh, so they gave her the wedding dress. She went to bed, obviously the next morning they went into a cell to check up on her and she had died in her wedding dress in the bed. And since then, uh, there have been multiple sightings of a white lady in a white wedding dress roaming around the area. And she's just down there. And she's apparently just down there. <sighs> What's that mess, man? Look at the ceiling. Fucking hell. And the moles. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yeah, 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 no, we shouldn't be in here. Get me out of this room. Get me out now. It's almost comical how loud that's creeping. <laughs> Look at this, Joe. Someone spilt strawberry jam all over the bed. Oh, oh, look. A lovely hole in the wall. What's that? It's the 1600 cell. Through the hole, you will discover a small room believed to be an original cell 400 years old. You actually want to go through that? Uh, apparently, you're allowed to. There's space for up to four people inside. Bullshit is there. There's only two of us in here. Oh, what's that? Right. What is this? All right, in I go. Yeah, you have to hold this. Oh, fuck. What? 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 That scared the fuck out of me. What is it? Look, look at, look through that window there. What's that? Oh, oh. My heart's racing after that. <laughs> Some fucker here has put a dummy hand there to scare the shit out of me. Thank you for that. I think my main takeaway from this um, this weekend so far is don't go to prison. <laughs> don't ever, ever go to prison. Well, with Joey almost having a heart attack thanks to a plastic hand, we finally retire to our haunted cell to attempt to sleep in some way, shape or form. Great news, guys, I got a mattress. I told the staff that uh, I didn't bring one and they were like, you're mental. You're supposed to bring something for that. And they, this was the last one. Good news, eh, Joey? Isn't that great? Yep, now I'm on the floor. Yeah, I've got a mattress. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this mattress is pretty hard. Oh, it's not oh, hard to handle this. Yeah, well, you better watch your back, mate. <laughs> look at that, look at that nice, clean. Oh. It looks like a prisoner has like soiled it. <laughs> Was it Amber Heard? <laughs> <laughs> it's one 
30 now and they wake everyone up at seven o'clock. So I'm gonna get five and a half hours sleep, if I'm lucky, before we get tossed out on the street. Although to be honest, I think both of us wanna get out of here as soon as possible anyway. Uh. Easily one of the worst <laughs> nights of my life. Oh no. Oh god. You didn't sleep? Bollocks. I went I couldn't sleep at first because you were snoring so loud. What? You were snoring so loud. Nonsense. I have here video evidence of you snoring. Really? Yeah. I think I got a little bit of sleep. Oh now he's changed his tune, hasn't he? Or maybe got a little bit of sleep. I got a little bit of sleep. Maybe got a little bit. Is he snoring? Is that me? That's you! <laughs> I wouldn't sleep at all, Chris. Just not apart from this video, uh, like a vacuum cleaner. Honestly. Dejected, tired and destroyed, inmates are tossed out of the prison at 8 o'clock in the morning. And so, having barely had any sleep between us, Joey and I finally leave our cell and vow never to go to prison again. Look at that, beautiful British street, Vickers Close in Wells. Can you believe Joey wanted to go to a little village called Crapnell? Just because it sounded funny. And I was like, no, Joey, I'm overriding that decision. We're going to end the video somewhere there, good. There were so many good places. There was Crapnell, there was Ham, Nutley. It's he, just... he was having too much fun with these place names, but uh, <laughs> no. I thought, end it somewhere good. Here we are in Wells. This is place. really nice. I don't know why I did this, but it's been kind of fun. How did you sleep? Did you enjoy yourself? I mean, I had crap sleep, but the prison was an experience, definitely. Oh, yeah. It was fucking terrifying. It was. If you want a good night's sleep, stay in the church. If you don't, go to Shepton Mallet Prison. But for <laughs> now, guys, thank you, Joey, for joining me. Have a Go great off. time in the UK. Enjoy we'll yourself. Do. Actually, go somewhere good. Yeah. Uh, don't go to crap. Man. <laughs> and uh, as always, guys, thank you for joining this very unique special edition of Wacky Weekend UK. For more behind the scenes content, check out the Abroad in Japan Patreon. But for now, we're off for some much needed breakfast because there wasn't any in the prison. Sausage bath? Sausage bath. Let's go. Sausage bath. <laughs> That's a good bath. Oh, you know what? It's been two and a half long. Oh, I can't fucking talk. There's a chip in my mouth. All right, it's time we went outside. One of the uh, the highlights of this hotel are the thirty. <laughs> Keeps on bringing people back. Why are you mouth? <laughs> when I met Andy Dufresne. <laughs> he was a fucking idiot.